Blaine? His name is Blaine? That's a major appliance. That's not a name. Molly Ringwald, John Cryer, Andrew McCarthy, Annie Potts, James Spader, the late Harry Dean Stanton, a script from John Hughes, and those killer songs by OMD and Psychedelic Furs. It's Pretty in Pink, one of the greatest teen dramedies of all time. Here, we'll take a look at 10 things you never knew about Pretty in Pink. If you enjoy this video, please like it and share it with your friends. And subscribe to MovieWeb to keep up with the conversation about all of the things we love. The Other Andy John Hughes wrote Pretty in Pink specifically for Molly Ringwald after the pair made 16 Candles together. But the studio, Paramount, wanted the producers to look for a bigger name. It's pretty bad. Executive producer and screenwriter Hughes and director Howard Deutsch offered the part to Flashdance star Jennifer Beals. The audition, I don't care. Who turned it down. Thankfully, the pair went back to their original choice. Incidentally, Andy's awesome thrift store aesthetic was based on Ringwald's real-life personal style. So beautiful. The other Blaine. Charlie Sheen was in the running to play Blaine. That's cool. Who Hughes and the film's director saw as more of a traditional jock. But according to Andrew McCarthy, in an interview for the DVD, Molly had seen him in St. Elmo's Fire. <sighs> as he remembers it, she told producers something like, that's the kind of guy I would fall in love with, not some square-jawed hunky guy. I have some taste. People think she's a whore. He sent her a four-foot-tall Gumby doll as a thank you gift. Well, you're all I think about. The other ducky. This information cannot leave this room, okay? It would devastate my reputation as a dude. Pretty in Pink could have reunited Ringwald with her 16 Candles co-star, Anthony Michael Hall. How's it going? Who had already played different Hughes-written characters. As since reported by author Susanna Gora, after Hall passed on the part... I'm at a loss. Ringwald hoped to see it go to somebody like Robert Downey Jr. What's that? <laughs> How kind, really. Because, quote, he was different and he was quirky, but it was completely imaginable that we would end up together. Ooh, I look so shiny in that, ooh. The other man. The chemistry may have been fantastic with her on-screen suitors, but Molly already had a guy at the time. Ringwald was dating guitarist Dweezil Zappa, one of the children of late iconoclastic musical legend Frank Zappa. A one-time MTV VJ, Dweezil had a small role in Arnold Schwarzenegger's The Running Man and shows up in Pretty in Pink as Andy's rocker friend, Simon. Dweezil later dated fellow musician Lisa Loeb. Molly married her second husband in 2007. They have three children. The Other Ducky Song one of the most memorable scenes in Pretty in Pink is when the heartsick duck man I love this woman and I have to tell her throws his very essence into Try a Little Tenderness by Otis Redding. All it said in the script was Ducky comes in lip syncing a song with great energy. Cryer's original pick was State of Shock by Mick Jagger and Michael Jackson. The director preferred the Rolling Stones' Start Me Up, but they couldn't obtain the rights. The song, of course, eventually became the Otis Redding track. For those moves, which the actor said in a 2006 interview were definitely meant to be comedic, Cryer worked closely with Kenny Ortega, choreographer on Xanadu, San Elmo's Fire, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Dirty Dancing. Ortega went on to direct as well, taking on several episodes of Ally McBeal and Gilmore Girls, and directing a bunch of movies, including Newsies, Hocus Pocus, and the high school musical movies. The other Pretty in Pink. Speaking of music, the movie didn't inspire the song of the same name. It was, in fact, the other way around. Come on, don't stop, give me more! After Molly Ringwald turned John Hughes onto the psychedelic furs Pretty in Pink. Good, I'll take it. The title stuck in his head. I thought about your predisposition toward pink, he said to his young star in a Seventeen magazine article published the same year the movie was released. I wrote Pretty in Pink the week after we finished Sixteen Candles. I so desperately hate to end these movies that the first thing I do when I'm done is write another one. Then I don't feel sad about having to leave and everybody going away. The other ending. I mean, you shouldn't be allowed to invite just anybody. In one of the best-known bits of trivia, the film originally concluded with Blaine bowing to peer pressure. And I told you it wasn't gonna work, you know. And ditching Andy, who defiantly takes the dance floor with Ducky. The duo cut a rug to David Bowie's heroes like nobody was watching. As the Hollywood story goes, a test audience of teenagers booed that ending, so it was reshot to put Andy with Blaine instead. It was Hughes' idea to have Blaine show up to the prom alone, demonstrating that he'd chosen Andy instead of his friends. What's lesser known is that McCarthy is wearing a wig in those scenes. I bet it looked great on you. Thanks to the close crop he was sporting for a play when the reshoots rolled around. As he later joked, it looks like a rodent on my head. By the way, the Pretty in Pink novelization was written before the change was made. The other OMD song. 
It's hard to imagine Pretty in Pink without If You Leave, the moving synth pop hit by orchestral maneuvers in the dark. But the song OMD had originally given the movie was Goddess of Love. But once the ending shifted, the filmmakers felt like it no longer fit. So the English group was tasked with writing a new song and had less than 24 hours to do it. The result, If You Leave, is of course a masterpiece. Thanks to OMD, Psychedelic Furs, NXS, New Order, Echo and the Bunny Men, The Smiths, and other artists, the Pretty in Pink soundtrack landed at number 11 in Rolling Stone's list of the 20 25 greatest soundtracks of all time, alongside undeniable classics like Purple Rain, The Harder They Come, Singles, and Saturday Night Fever. The Other Dialogue Ducky should have the girl, and it was all built for that, and it was designed for that. The film's director said in Susanna Gora's 2010 book, You Couldn't Ignore Me If You Tried, The Brat Pack, John Hughes, and Their Impact on a Generation. And I could have ended that way, had I not messed with one thing. I cast John Cryer. I don't think it makes a difference. But whatever one's feelings about Ducky is played by Cryer versus what a Robert Downey Jr. type might have done. You've been replaced. The actor's contributions are undeniable. I swear to God, my thighs just went up in flames. For example, at least a few of the movie's best lines weren't written by John Hughes. They were devised by John Cryer himself. The bit about a major appliance? John Cryer. Blaine? His name is Blaine? Oh, that's a major appliance! That's not a name! And so was the bit in the girl's bathroom, which was based on a real-life experience from junior high, where Cryer mistook the tampon machine for a candy machine. Wait a minute! We don't have none of this stuff in the boys! Wait a minute! We don't got none of this! We don't got doors! The other Ringwald Hughes movies. Molly Ringwald and John Hughes made three genre and decade-defining films together. The Breakfast Club, I don't think I belong in here, 16 Candles, and Pretty in Pink. Though Pretty in Pink was the last of them, there were a handful of near misses. There's Oil and Vinegar, which would have been directed by Howard Deutsch and paired Ringwald with Matthew Broderick. Yep. But for various reasons was never made. And the other near miss was Some Kind of Wonderful from the same writer-director duo. Ringwald passed on the part that went to Mary Stuart Masterson. The movie also stars Leah Thompson, who went on to marry Howard Deutsch shortly after. It wasn't deliberate. I was mad and he stepped in. Their daughters, Madeline and Zoe, are both actresses. We hope you enjoyed this look at 10 things you never knew about Pretty in Pink. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends. And subscribe to MovieWeb to keep up with the conversation about all of the things we love. <laughs> You're fabulous. I do love you. I do love you. And for the record, we here at MovieWeb love John Cryer as the Duckman.